doubling down on ugly, misogynistic, racist lies as a substitute for real ideas and solutions that will actually make people's lives better. Look, because cutting our health care, taking away our freedom to control our bodies, the freedom to become a mother through IVF like I did, those things are not going to improve the health outcomes of our wives, mothers, and daughters. Shutting down the Department of Education, banning our books, none of that will prepare our kids for the future. Demonizing our children for being who they are and loving who they love, look, that doesn't make anybody's life better. Instead, instead, it only makes us small. And let me tell you this, going small is never the answer. Going small is the opposite of what we teach our kids. Going small is petty, it's unhealthy, and quite frankly, it's unpresidential. Why would any of us accept this from anyone seeking our highest office? Why would we normalize that type of backward leadership. Doing so only demeans and cheapens our politics. It only serves to further discourage good, big-hearted people from wanting to get involved at all. America, our parents taught us better than that, and we deserve so much better than that. That's why we must do everything in our power to elect two of those good, big-hearted people. There is no other choice than Kamala Harris and Tim Walls. No other choice. But as we embrace this renewed sense of hope, let us not forget the despair we have felt. Let us not forget what we are up against. Yes, Kamala and Tim are doing great now. We're loving it. They're packing arenas across the country. Folks are energized. We are feeling good. But remember, there are still so many people who are desperate for a different outcome, who are ready to question and criticize every move Kamala makes, who are eager to spread those lies, who don't want to vote for a woman, who will continue to prioritize building their wealth over ensuring that everyone has enough. So folks, we cannot be our own worst enemies. No. See, because the minute something goes wrong, the minute a lie takes hold, folks, we cannot start wringing our hands. We cannot get a Goldilocks complex about whether everything is just right. And we cannot indulge our anxieties about whether this country will elect someone like Kamala instead of doing everything we can to get someone like Kamala elected. Kamala and Tim they have lived amazing lives. And I, I am confident that they will lead with compassion, inclusion, and grace. But they are still only human. They are not perfect. And like all of us, they will make mistakes. But luckily, y'all, this is not just on them. No, uh-uh, this is up to us, all of us, to be the solution that we seek. It's up to all of us to be the antidote to the darkness and division. Look, I don't care how you identify politically, whether you're Democrat, Republican, Independent, or none of the above, this is our time to stand up for what we know in our hearts is right. It's up to us to remember what Kamala's mother told her. Don't just sit around and complain. Do something. So if they lie about her, and they will, 
We've got to do something. If we see a bad poll, and we will, we got to put down that phone and do something. If we start feeling tired, if we start feeling that dread creeping back in, we got to pick ourselves up, throw water on our face, and what? Do something. Consider this to be your official ask. Michelle Obama is asking you, no, I'm telling y'all to do something. The other side knows it's easier to play on people's fears and cynicism, always has been. They will tell you that government is inherently corrupt, that, that sacrifice and generosity are for suckers. And since the game is rigged, it's okay to take what you want and, and just look after your own. That's the easy path. We have a different task. Our job is to convince people that democracy can actually deliver. And, and in doing that, we can't just point to what we've already accomplished. We can't just rely on the ideas of the past. We need to chart a new way forward to meet the challenges of today. And Kamala understands this. Our politics have become so polarized these days that all of us across the political spectrum seem so quick to assume the worst in others, unless they agree with us on every single issue. We start thinking that the only way to win is to scold and shame and out-yell the other side. And after a while, regular folks just tune out, or they don't bother to vote. Now, that approach may work for the politicians who just want attention and thrive on division. But it won't work for us to make progress on the things we care about, the things that really affect people's lives. We, we need to remember that we've all got our blind spots and, and contradictions and, and prejudices, and that if we want to win over those who aren't yet ready to support our candidates, we need to listen to their concerns and maybe learn something in the process. We recognize that the world is moving fast, that they need time and maybe a little encouragement to catch up. Our fellow citizens deserve the same grace we hope they'll extend to us. That's how we can build a true democratic majority, one that can get things done. And by the way, that does not just matter to the people in this country. The rest of the world is watching to see if we can actually pull this off. And that's why when we uphold our values, the world's a little brighter. When we don't, the world's a little dimmer, and dictators and autocrats feel emboldened. And over time, we become less safe. We shouldn't be the world's policemen, and we can't eradicate every cruelty and injustice in the world. But America can be and must be a force for good, <laughs> discouraging conflict, fighting disease, promoting human rights, protecting the planet from climate change, defending freedom, brokering peace. That's what Kamala Harris believes, and so do most Americans. It's very hot. And a lot of the people waited for days to get here, so I understand it. Take your time, doctor. Take your time. Thank you.
And all I can do is pledge to you that we're going to do a great job for North Carolina. We're going to do a great job for the United States of America. We put America first. And we're going to make America great again. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.